Hey there fellow classic comic collectors, as always I'm Scott Harris King and in this episode we got another batch of new arrivals. Uh, these have been trickling in so I've been recording them every day when I get you know a comic or two comics in the mail. I do a little recording and now I'm editing them all together into uh, an exciting uh, batch of new comics that have just come in. So. You're gonna see me progress over the course of these videos from a, from a young, uh, enthusiastic, um, fresh-faced youth into a grizzled old man, and that's just this video alone as we go through the days of the quarantine. Um, but I uh, got some cool books this time. I've also got some books that didn't show up, and right at the end we've got a bit of a mystery book that, that comes out of nowhere and surprises me, thanks to the vagaries of the United States Postal Service. So, thanks for watching, let's jump right into the footage. Alright, I'm back, another day, another group of packages. So let's see what we got here. Uh, this one here, I've got an individual issue inside. Tape to the board, and it is. Oh, look at this! It's uh, it's another Atlas book. It's my own romance number fifty. Number fifty. This is a cool. This is a bit of an older one than some of the other Atlas ones. Um, we have it listed as a four point five. This is from nineteen fifty six, and um. It's in solid shape again. I'm not sure about these. It, um, it's one of these ones where I saw the like buy it now price. I thought it was going a little too cheaply, so uh, um, I bought it. And then afterwards, I was like, okay, I got I got a good deal on something that I don't need. Now it's a really cool cover. I like it quite a bit. Um, looks to me like it might be Coletta. Uh, but I'm not an expert at all on the Atlas artists. I know Coletta did some of their covers. They also had J. Scott Pike doing stuff before he went to DC and, um, a lot of good artists, but, uh, yeah, so this is cool. I don't know if I'm going to keep this one. I'm starting to amass this little pile of Atlas romance books. Um, and since I don't actually collect Atlas, I, I don't know. I'm really on the fence. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should I, should I keep these? Should I, uh sell them to someone who um, collects Atlas and would appreciate them more? Should I bite the bullet and start getting into Atlas myself? Um, I don't know. What do you think? Let me, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, and here we've got um, a package from Basement Comics. I buy a lot of stuff from them on eBay. Um, they have a lot of romance books, so I end up going to them quite a bit. They have this unique packaging. You can always tell it's them because they take, they have a way where they take backing boards and they make this like burrito. It's like a comic burrito. Um, but I've, I've opened this up here and let me, uh, let me get the comics out. I have an idea of what's in, of what's in this one. Um, so first one out of the gate, it is, uh, a young love number 105. They have it at a, at a VG plus getting a lot of glare off of that but uh, hopefully you can see it okay um yeah it's in a mylar for some reason so there's extra glare because it's extra shiny um yeah so young love 105 i'm starting to get to the point where i almost want to sort of hone in on young love uh, and young romance they're not quite a critical mass but you know you get some momentum with these titles where you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel um with both of these books, they both ran one series was like 85 issues and the other was like 88 at DC. In both cases, I'm down to between 20 and 28 left to get. Um, and so I'm, I'm not quite there, but I'm like, if I get a few more of these, I'm going to start to see the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of finishing the run. And then I'm going to sort of have hit this critical mass where I'm like, okay, now we can focus. I'm actually starting to feel that way about my Patsy Walker run. Um, but uh, it's nice to sort of have a specific focus 
and to just get a run complete is such a great feeling and it also opens you up to being able to sort of put that aside and get other things but not quite there with young love and young romance just yet but i i'm starting to to sniff around to the edges i paid about eight and a half dollars each for these after shipping um it was one of these things where there was a couple issues that i knew i really wanted and uh, once i won the auctions on that i figured i might as well get some of the others because the combined shipping means that i've sort of already paid for the shipping um so this was a bit of an impulse purchase uh, one thing about basement comics is they have a large collection if you go on ebay and look at their store of australian versions of romance comics and um i just really like the cover of this one a lot i have no idea what the contents are um these are um books from the late 50s early 60s that are reprinting 50s romance american romance comics um but a lot of times they'll have new covers and um, i don't know what this is from i don't recognize the image but i just love the cover and for eight dollars um i decided you know i'm definitely gonna throw this in it's um it's actually in pretty nice shape it's very clean there's some stuff on the spine uh, particularly down at the bottom but it looks to me like this is probably a 6.5 maybe and i just really dig that that cover um i've got a display downstairs in the living room where i have a stand set up to display one of my comics as part of our living room decor and i sort of trade out what cover is there i, I might do this because I, I like uh, this cover a lot uh, let's see what's up next uh, this one was a little more on the fence about, um, only because of the condition. It's it's only like a, a 2.5. Um, but this is My Romantic Adventures number 113. There was a period uh, right around this era where they were doing these um, pseudo like painted covers. Uh, this is a nurse um, who is comforting a man. Um, and uh, I, some of these covers from this era are really interesting and cool. I have a thing for my romantic adventures. Again, this lower grade, but since I was already paying for the shipping, I think this particular copy was $7. Um, so, yeah, I decided, you know what, let's do it. These aren't that easy to find, so, so why not? Um, so next up we have... Girls' Romances, uh, this is issue 141. Um, I like the the big lozenge logo era of Girls' Romances. Before this, they had the lozenge, but it was smaller. Um, I like the lozenge logo. I just, there's a lot of cool logos for DC Romance books. Again, this is sort of a solid mid-grade book. They have it listed as, as a VG. Uh, first glance, it actually looks a little bit better than that to me, but... Uh, I'll have to take a close look at it, but, um, yeah, another nice, uh, DC sort of, uh, late Silver Age is still 12 cents, so I think we'll put it in Silver Age, but with the logo and the, the cover design in particular, you can tell it's right at the end of that. Okay, the last book was stuck in there, but I, I pulled it out, um, and this is an older one. It is Girls Romances number 39. Uh, now this is the lower grade. It's like a 3.5. Um, and again, I'm getting some glare. But uh, it's got some writing on the cover. This is an older one, though. Um, got It's got a tear at the spine. So, you know, it's pretty rough, but it's complete. And it displays well. So I can read it and look at it. And for the price, again... Um, these are after shipping about eight and a half dollars each. This is, um, it's a 10 cent. It's a little 10 cent and it still has this logo here. So I'm guessing just, I haven't looked into it, but my guess is this is pretty soon after the code. This is probably either 56, uh, or 57. Um, so it's, you know, books from this era are really starting to pick up at, at uh, every grade so getting this for eight and a half dollars i'm pretty happy with so that's today's haul um i still have some more stuff coming including 
waiting for that mystery grail and then we'll see how that comes on and i'm planning on ending the video with that if it shows up anytime soon so let's uh let's see what happens hi there another day another weird thing came in the mail so remember how in my last video i had uh received some stuff in the uh, mail that is completely wrecked basically i had one package bent in half and then a second one that was not just bent in half but also had a hole just jabbed through it that actually damaged the comic a little bit so this one as you can see it's just rock solid except there's this one little window in the middle that has a little bit of bubble wrap this was inside an envelope and sure enough there was a hole punched through the envelope right into this window all of this great backing and they leave this Achilles heel and the post office found it. Bam. Luckily, it didn't seem to actually go through the bubble wrap, although it did tear a giant hole <laughs> in the actual envelope. But anyway, um, just more adventures with eBay and the post office. Um, so I'm going to unwrap this, um, this diaper box and we'll see what's inside. All right, so once I got that open, uh, it was interesting. It's always interesting to see how they pack it. There was three comics from the 1950s packed in the bubble wrap. No bags, no boards, but swaddled in bubble wrap inside a cardboard box. Um, I paid $10 each for these. That includes shipping, um, so I'm pretty happy with these. Again, these are from the 50s, and um, they're um, solid uh, lower mid-grade, like... Um, very tight, um, but with issues. So like, here we have Falling in Love 23. Um, it's got, it's very clean, but it does have some wrinkling you can't see. The main issue is there's a lot of damage to the spine, particularly here in the middle. Um, but the back cover is actually white and glossy and flat and clean. So... It's a really uh, interesting book. Um, it's always interesting when there's like one specific weird flaw. In this case, it's just it's got the spine is split a little bit in between the staples. Uh, so that's book one. And then we've got book two. It is Secret Hearts number 38. Again, um, back cover is actually quite nice. And some great house ads, right? um front cover uh and again it's an it's really interesting um it's quite bright white uh, but it does also have some some uh water stains here um but overall again solid um lower mid-grade i know people hammer the staining but um it's a tight um clean book there's some wear on the spine i mean to me this is with a staining, it's probably a 3.5, but it presents really well. Um, this is These are from 1957, so that's Secret Hearts 38. And finally, we have here, it's uh, Secret Hearts number 40. Um, great black cover. Again, we have some, um, sp some splitting here on the spine. I suspect this is bugged. Uh, I've seen this before on some of my other romance books where everything's fine except for there's just part of the spine missing i'm pretty sure that's bug chew um silverfish or something but look at the great colors on this other than the split it's actually in pretty pretty nice shape um the the staples are actually rusty though so that's not good um but again look look at how bright and glossy the back cover is with this great advertisement so these are these are really tight um really nice page quality just this weird sort of spine damage so um again i paid ten dollars each for those i'm pretty happy with that price uh for books from the late 50s these are not that easy to find in any condition and while these have flaws that definitely hold the grading back they're probably um each of them is probably somewhere between a two and a three at best because of the um I would say the one with the with the the thirty eight the white cover with the staining is probably the highest grade of the three. The other two, because of the the spine splitting, um, 
they have a lower technical grade. It's probably only about a three, but they present beautifully. They're tight. They're clean. Great page quality. Great back cover. So very happy with these purchases. I think I got a, a decent price on these. And um, so that's it for today. And uh, we're still waiting on um, this uh, big grill package. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully it'll come soon. Okay, I just got the mail. Only one book today. It's actually not a back issue, but I still want to show it off. Uh, it is Boston Powers, number one. Let me take it out of the bag here so you can get it with less glare. Boston Powers, number one. So uh, this is something I got off a of Kickstarter. And the reason I wanted to show this is um, I'm part of a group of uh, comic creators. They meet every week in Boston called the Boston Comics Roundtable. It's all independent uh, artists and writers and people that just love making comics and it's sort of like uh, just sort of a community um, there's like a support community to help each other and um, we do anthologies uh, we also have tables at local shows and stuff and uh, basically Dan who's one of the founders and the guy who sort of runs things you know he realized that at all the shows people are coming up and they're looking for stuff for their kids and while we have some of our anthologies include kid-friendly content. There's nothing that's specifically aimed at kids. So he decided to do this anthology that's all um, stories specifically for kids, superhero stories specifically for kids, set in Boston, since we're Boston-based and all of our creators are in the Boston area. Um, this is the first of the issues that's come out, Boston Powers. We had a successful Kickstarter for it. Um, We've got more planned. I've got a story that I wrote that's going to appear in issue three. I don't have a story in the first issue, but in issue three, I've got one the artist is drawing currently. So I'm really excited to get this. I think it's a really cool initiative. I can't wait to actually have conventions again. I sometimes um, at shows, and rather than having my own table, I will help man the Boston Comics Roundtable booth. Um, which is always fun. Uh, so it, it's just, it's really exciting to get this. I'm looking forward to reading it. Most of the stories have uh, kid heroes. Um, uh, in this one, we've got a monster that looks kind of like Wally the Green Monster, the Red Sox mascot. And uh, the hero, there's a story with a, a group of, um, it's like a girl's rock band, but they all have superpowers. And uh, so you can see she's flying on her guitar, kind of like Silver Surfer. So really cool. A lot of great uh, creators, cool art styles, very different uh, vibes from one story to the next, but all, all really cool for kids. So I'm excited to get this. Can't wait to see issue three when it finally comes out later this year, once it's done. Um, I'm hoping... Uh, that we'll be doing more issues of this will become an ongoing series. Uh, I think three a year is about as much as we can do as a group, and it takes a lot of Dan's time up. But um, I think once we get back to being able to do shows, this will be very successful at the convention booths, and uh, I expect that we'll want to keep doing more issues. So I'm really excited for that opportunity. I'm already thinking of uh, some new stories for future issues that I can submit. So anyway, I'm still waiting for the big package with this grail book that I bought, I'm getting kind of nervous because it wasn't, it was just sent um, ground mail. And with some of the packages I've been getting the last couple of weeks that have been just like completely trashed by the post office. I really wish considering the amount of money I paid for this, they had sprung for some better packaging uh, and sent it priority, but I'm hoping it's packed really, really soundly because um, it's, it's a big package with some, with one particular very expensive book and I'm hoping it doesn't get ruined. So, uh, maybe tomorrow, next day, uh, another mail call, still no sign of my big package. I did however get another comic that was folded in half and jammed in the mailbox. And I can tell just by feeling it that this has no backing board or anything on it. So, uh, that one's kind of frustrating. All you need to do is put a stiff piece of cardboard here and the postal guy won't destroy it. But I don't know what this is. Um, I'm assuming it's a romance comic or something. It might be a Patsy Walker. I don't know. Let's, let's uh, just open it right here. Um, I did have an eye out for the postman. I'm starting to get the sense that uh, this could happen. So I w was able to get it after just a few minutes. 
and uh, it's wrapped in it's hold on <laughs> okay I'm back I had to get some scissors because this is sealed in a plastic bag I have to have to cut it out of here the jaws of life and um, okay let's see what it is it's a comic book it's an old comic book it's oh I was right it's another copy of Patsy Walker 124 that's weird I just got one of these and I don't think I bought a second one so I've got no idea Someone maybe send this to me for free? I don't remember buying it. I, I did have someone recently that accidentally sent me a whole pile of baseball cards. It was someone I had bought something from previously and they got the addresses mixed up and they just sent me someone else's order of baseball cards. So I'll have to check and see. Um, this is actually a little bit nicer than the one that I got. It does have a lot of tanning on the back cover, but structurally it's nicer. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do some research. I'll come back to you when I figure out what the hell this is. Okay, I'm back. Mystery solved. Uh, it turns out I actually did buy two copies of Patsy Walker 124. And the reason that that ended up happening was that, you know, when I buy the comics, um, I usually don't update my checklist until I get them in. But I can tell what's coming because I can just look at my eBay, pur eBay purchase history, right? But I purchased this issue so long ago that it was no longer appearing on my purchase history that's because i bought that back in march it was mailed in march and was lost in the mail apparently all the way until the beginning of june which is when i'm recording this now in june so the estimated arrival date on that was april 1st and here we are in the middle of june and it's finally showing up but because the eBay purchase history only shows the last 60 days, it wasn't listed as something that I had bought anymore because it just wasn't coming up. And also, I hadn't updated my checklist yet to show that I had it because it didn't arrive. So when I was buying a bunch of other issues to Patsy Walker, I bought a second copy of 124, not remembering that I had already bought one. So that's on me. It's also... Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the post office these days. I know there's a lot of stuff um with the virus so I, I can't get too upset about it but um because this didn't have a tracking number i wasn't able to track it um speaking of not having a tracking number the other thing that i don't have right now still is this grail book that i've been checking the mail every day looking for still not here yet uh that didn't have a tracking number associated with it so i'm hoping it doesn't get lost in the mail for two months uh, or three months like this issue of patsy walker but i think i'm just gonna have to wrap up this video because um, I have so much stuff coming in that if I keep waiting for this book to come, uh, this video is going to be like 400 hours long. So hopefully it'll come soon. When it does, I'm going to do a whole video just on uh, this this arrival because it is coming in a lot. So I've got like 15 or 16 books that it's coming in um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, thanks for watching and um, we'll, we'll see you next time.